When we mention um, where is something undefined, it's where the denominator equal to zero. Right? So it's where the denominator equal to zero. Just like in slope, when we get the denominator equal to zero, it's undefined. So here, you take the denominator, y squared minus 9y is equal to zero. And now we have to solve this. Now, this is the same way to solve this as we have been for everything else. So what we do here is I factor out a y, and I have y minus 9 equal to zero. And then here, from here, I get y equals zero. From here, I get y equals nine. At these two points, this expression is undefined. So when you have a question like this, where it says, where is the expression undefined? You're just gonna take the denominator, you're gonna set it equal to zero, and you're gonna solve it. The process is gonna, same, is gonna be the same every single time. And then, you know, you have to solve it in whatever method we've learned throughout the year, right? Okay, now let's talk about simplifying rational expressions. A rational expression is basically, you know, like a ratio, something that has a numerator and a denominator, okay? Just like when you're reducing fractions, we have to simplify an irrational expression. You have to divide the, numer the numerator and denominator by the GCF. So, for example, if I have, you know, 12 over 18, right, what can I divide both of these by? Right, so basically the biggest number, well, is it just three or is it something else? Six. The biggest number that you can divide both of them by is what you divide it by. That's why it's the greatest common factor. Okay, yes, three is a common factor. Six is also a common factor. To reduce it in one shot, you would multiply by the greatest common factor, which is a six, right? So we divide by six. Divide by 6, and you get 2 thirds. That same principle works for, you know, whatever you're doing. So let's take a look at this here. Um, okay, so between the 27 and the 9, the greatest common factor, we can divide both of them by a 9. This becomes a 3, and that becomes a 1. So I write the 3 here. Now, Let's take a look at the x's. I have two x's here, one x there. How many x's am I going to have left over? And is it going to be on the top or at the bottom? Top. What about the y's, huh? Because you have, you subtract the exponents. 2 minus 1. The y's will cancel each other out. And then the z's. You have 3 and 1, so z squared on the top. Since you have nothing left for the bottom, you just don't have a denominator. The denominator is technically 1, but you don't write it right. It doesn't have to stay as a fraction, right? Okay, so here, right off the bat, I can see that this y and this y cancel out, right? Because it's 1y and 1y alone. So now, what do I have left? I have 4, y minus 3, y plus 4. And then in the denominator, I can factor out this denominator, right? And that will be y minus how much? 3, y plus 2. Now, the things that are binomials, right? Things that are being added or subtracted to something else together are full entities. So in this case, the 4 is a separate thing. And here the y was a separate thing. But this y minus 3 is one package together. You cannot separate the y from the minus 3. So the y minus 3 is one package together. The y plus 4 is one entity together. You can only cancel these out with an identical package on the bottom side. So for example, y minus 3 in its entirety 
cancels with y minus 3 in its entirety. So what I have left here is 4, y plus 4 over y plus 2. Now in situations like this, student go like reduce happy, right? And they're like, oh, well, I can reduce the y with the y. No, okay? We were able to reduce these y's because they were single lonely entities and you could reduce it. But here, the y is attached to the two. Unless you can find another y plus two somewhere on the top, you cannot cancel these two. So this is it, we're done. You can also not reduce the four and the two, right? Because this two is connected to this four, uh, to this y. All right, so this is it, this is the final answer. Now, somebody's gonna ask me, can I distribute the four and get four y plus 16? That's up to you. But in the beginning, could you just cross this over that or that and do it like the way we did with a? Wait, here? For that whole thing, like you can distribute, so distribute all oh, of Oh, no. Them. You can't do it like that? No, be, so the point is to subtract them. Once you distribute, then you have things that are just added to each other and then mm -hmm. you can't. You can't distribute like that. Okay, you can only um, you can only fra uh, cancel things that are factored. Okay, sometimes you can factor out a minus one. Basically, here is when that happens. So take a look. If I have five minus three, how much is that? Two. If I have three minus five, how much is that? Do you see how they're the same number with a negative difference? Those can be divided with each other. So when you have two things being subtracted, but in reverse order, the, it's the same with a negative difference. So here, if I have A minus B and B minus A, it's both A, B, A, B being subtracted in reverse order, that just becomes negative one. So here, I have X minus five, five minus X. You can cancel these out, but it will become a negative 1. Now here, before I even attempt anything, can I factor anything out from the top? What? A 4, and I get 3 minus x, x minus 3. Now look, 3 minus x, x minus 3, they're the same thing being subtracted in reverse order. I can cancel them out, but it becomes a minus one. So it'll be negative four, okay? Now, how about this? Suppose you have five plus x and x plus five. Can you cancel those out? Are they the same thing? They are the same thing. When you cancel those out, do you get a minus? You just get a one, right? These are the same, so you just get a one. It's only when you're subtracting that there is a negative difference. Okay, so let's simplify. First, you have to ask yourself if you can factor anything out. From the top, can I factor anything out? No? A what? Just A squared or more? A to the 4 from the top. So I get B minus 2. I can factor out A cubed from the bottom. I get 2 minus b. Okay, now, don't jumble them up. Let's go one by one. a to the 4, a to the 3. How many a's will be left over? 1 where? Top. b minus 2, 2 minus b. What happens there? So it's just negative a. All right? Oh, yeah. Here, what can I factor out? From the top, an A and a B. Okay, so look. From here, I have just B left. Minus the A and the B factored out, so I have a 5 left. Okay. The bottom, we have to be a little bit more careful. What I have in the bottom is a perfect square minus a perfect square. Remember when we have that, it's a minus b, a plus b, right? Like 3 minus x, 3 plus x, x minus 3, x plus 3. So here, perfect square, perfect square with a minus in the middle. 
I, okay, so I take, yes, I take the square root of the first one, which is a 5. I take the square root of the second one, which is a b. 1 gets a plus, 1 gets a minus. Now, b minus 5 and 5 minus b, do those cancel? They do. Do we get a negative 1? We do. Always write it like this so you don't forget. So here I get negative AB over 5 plus B. And that's it. You just leave it. Now look, I had parentheses here. I chose to take them out here. That's okay. But now, can we cancel the B with the B? No. Okay, because this is added to something else. So you can't touch it. A plus B are together. You can only cancel with another A plus B. Okay, Ella then Sunny. Um, when we have to multiply and divide these rational expressions, um, so when you have two things that are being multiplied like this, you can cancel anything from any numerator with anything from any denominator. And then division, you know, you multiply by the reciprocal. You guys know this. Okay, so look here. What I want to do here is I want to combine into one fraction, right? These are being multiplied, so I want to combine into one fraction. So here's what I do. In the numerator, I can't multiply anything out, so I just write them next to each other, 8xy squared. In the denominator, what I want to do basically is I want to collect the coefficients in the beginning and then all the numbers at the end. Liam, can you sit up? Like, put, put that on your, I know you're, I know you're following, but yeah, thank you. So I want to collect all the coefficients here, 21, 16. I'm not going to multiply it out. It's too much math. I don't want to do that. And then I have x cubed, y cubed. Okay, so I'm just, you know, collecting things, right? So now, take a look. Let's do coefficients first. The 8 and the 16 simplify, yes? Is there a number I can divide both of them by? Eight. eight. So this becomes a one, this becomes a two. So let's start here. I'm going to have a 21 and a two. I'm pretty much done with those coefficients, right? There's nothing else to cancel. How about x's? How many am I going to have left over and where? Huh? Negative two, so two on the bottom, right? It'll be x to the negative two, but does it stay in the top or does it go to the bottom eventually? Bottom. Right. So x squared here. Okay, what about the y's? Y. One where? Bottom. On the bottom. If I have nothing else left on top, I put a 1 here. So this will be 1 over 42x squared y. So let me show you a quicker way to do this, right? I mean, I know most of you are doing it this way anyway. So you have y squared and y cubed. The difference between these two is one. So it's like the top and the bottom are like duking it out. There's one left over. Because there was more at the bottom to begin with, that one stays over here. Here too, I have one and three. The difference is two, right, between one and three. Because there was more at the bottom when they go head to head, the bottom side wins, so they collect the extra bit, okay? Yeah. Why is the y not negative 1? I didn't see that. So that's what I was saying. So it was negative 1 on top, right? But then because it's negative, it goes on the bottom, and it becomes 1 over y. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it would have been y to the negative 1 over here, but then that moves to the bottom. The shortcut is... Just look at the difference between them, and then whichever side has more, that side wins and keeps those extra ones. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Now I have a division, meaning it's going to be the first one as is times the reciprocal of the second. We're dividing, so you have to flip the second fraction. Okay. okay, so let's combine under one 
in one fraction. So put the, um, you know, coefficients here. I have m k o. Oh. Yeah, that's right. m k squared, c squared, d squared. Right. I'm just writing them next to each other. And then here I have three times five. Um, c squared d m squared. Okay. So I'm gonna do this one. So just listen to me. Okay. <sighs> The 10 and the 5, I can divide both by 5, I get a 2 here. The 3 and the 6, I can divide both by 3, I get a 2 here. So now, I have a 2 and a 2. Okay. Yeah. You can do that, but when the numbers are like 18 and 17 and like 21 and 42, then it's too big and it's easier to reduce this way, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this now. I'm going to look at the M's. One M here, two M's here. One, two. There is a difference of one, okay? The bottom side has more M's. They win. They keep that extra M. Okay, let's do the C's. C square, C square, they go away. Let's do the D's. Two D's, one D. That's a difference of how many? One. one. Upper side has more. They win. That one D stays on top. And then K squared can't cancel with anything, so it stays there as well. In the end, I have four d k squared over m all right amanda okay so here this i can factor one minus k squared and it becomes square root of the first one one square root of the second k k plus minus okay Huh? Yeah. This bottom, I factor k, k minus 3 minus 1. So now, let's combine under in one uh, fraction. I have k minus 3, 1 plus k, 1 minus k. Please don't switch up those orders, right, because they make a difference k plus 1, k minus 3, k minus 1. Okay. Anything from the top cancels with anything from the bottom. k minus 3s go away. Is that free or does it cost us a minus 1? Mm. It's free because it's the same order. Okay. What about the 1 plus k and, okay, hang on. What about the 1, okay, hang on. Let me, let me say my question first. What about the 1 plus k and the k plus 1? First, can you cancel them out? Does it cost us anything or is it free? Okay, it's free. Listen, when it's plus, it's free. Because look, what's 5 plus 3? 8. What's 3 plus 5? Same oh, thing. Don't, no. don't have a negative difference. Oh. So when it's pluses, it's free. Now, 1 minus k, k minus 1. Can we cancel? Yes. Yes. Is it free? No. Not free. So that negative 1. So the whole answer is just negative 1. How crazy. I like negative 1. Yeah. I know. That was fun. Okay? Okay, so here we go. Okay, can we factor the 2d plus 6? But can you factor anything out of it? A 2. Okay, what about this? What about this? Plus 2, minus 1. Yeah? Just say yes. Okay. D plus 3, but really, it does, right? 2 and negative 1. 
D plus 3 is good. Okay, what about this one? D plus 2, D plus 1. Okay, now, there is a division here. So we got to multiply and flip. So 2, D plus 3 over D plus 2, D minus 1. I'm not changing this one. Now, times, you flip the other one. Now, okay, I'm going to save some ink, right, and some lead, and I'm going to let you guys just, we're going to leave it like this. We're not going to combine it into one big fraction, knowing that anything from the top can cancel with anything from the bottom. So does the 2 have anything on the bottom that it can reduce with? No. How about the D plus 3? Okay, is that free? Okay. Now, cross over to the D plus 2. Does that cancel? And it's free? D plus 1? D minus 1? They stay. So what do I have? A 2, a D plus 1, and a D minus 1. Okay? No, I don't care. Just don't go crossing out the Ds and or the 1s. So many students at this stage, okay, don't write, please don't write this. Please don't write this. So many students on the test will be like, okay, 1, 1 goes away, D, D goes away, it's just 2. No, you can't do that. You cannot do that. Okay, so that's the final answer. All right, moving on. Complex fractions. Complex fractions, yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They both have to be negatives. Oh, I see. Okay. You see that? Yeah. They're both negatives. Okay. A complex fraction is when you have a fraction over another fraction. But remember, a fraction means division, right? So there is the main fraction line. This is the same as 1 over 2. Yeah, this is the same as 1 over 2 divided by 4 over 5. So it's times 5 over 4, okay? So same thing. You just multiply, flip the second one. So here, 9 over 8 times 4 over 3. And you can cancel, look, anything from the numerator with anything from the denominator. So that gives you a 3. And that gives you a 2 over here. So that's 3 over 2. Okay? All right, here, I suggest when you have a complex fraction, first write it out as two fractions. So the top fraction, x squared over 9x squared minus 4y squared, times the bottom fraction, but that we got to flip it. Right. Now, let's see what we can factor. X squared, we can't do anything with. How about this one? This looks like a perfect square situation to me. Yes. So, square root of the first one, what does it give me? Three. Yeah, three X. Three X. And then this one, two Y, two Y minus plus. Okay, so now, anything with the top can cancel with anything on the bottom. So let's take a look here. I have two X's and three X's. What's the difference? X. Oh, no, too much math. Okay. Well, I mean, not for me, but clearly draw board is a whole other situation. Okay. What about here? 2y minus 3x, can that cancel with anything? Not either, because that one has a minus. Okay, is it free? No, negative 1. 
And then the 3x plus 2y stays. So I have minus 1 and then 3x plus 2y. Okay? Right? Because remember, these went away. Tomorrow I have another, um, I have another, I have more practice because we just really need a lot of practice with these. All right. Now the homework from this is from the book. So why don't we get started? Put a cover sheet. Every single night.